Good afternoon, everyone. Community Earth system model unveiling. They were trying to show an upward trend of temperatures. The temperatures didn't rise for over 30 years in the middle part of the century. They were trying to say it's from particulates that they overestimated on the models. But I'm saying after you tried to match the data from CIMP6, the same thing, galactic cosmic ray increases are going to have a huge effect on the amount of cloud cover on this planet. The cloud mystery from Svensmark, the cloud project up at CERN, the study of galactic cosmic rays on aerosol and clouds. And when they forced the model so high, things went wrong. Well, I want to know at that upper level what went wrong. You need to double it. And that's really where we're going in this new grand solar minimum. And the intensification of the onset probably shocked you too. It was a set of data similar to this, that it happens so quickly that our cloud fraction and water vapor turned from the normal into something skewed like this, which would affect our crops and the food output on the planet. And join me for Mini Ice Age Conversations, episode number 25, talking about this exact same thing with agriculture during the Grand Solar Minimum with inventor Lee Wheelbarger. As you're watching, please remember to press that subscribe button and also click the bell so you can stay subscribed to get my latest updates. And while I start explaining my findings and at least the opinion I have and how I see it through my eyes, and this is my opinion of the information, this is the reason I started this channel is because when I find things like this and they can't get the models to run right, it makes me really question how stable or how accurate the models were to begin with. Case in point, Community Earth System Model, amazing new technology coming out. CESM2, you can look that up on a search engine. Now they ran through the supermodels and they were trying to show that there was an increase directly from 1900 up to 2000 with nothing cooling at all. And the global climatic behavior turned cold. Cooled for those 30 years. Doesn't matter if it's global, land, or on the sea. It showed that same cooling in the middle of the century. And then when they kicked on this simulation of aerosol effects, that's where they quote, things went wrong. Okay, these are the particulates they're using right now, and they tried to bump that amount up to see what would happen with the forcing and the cloud nucleation. And I really hope you remembered increased volcanism because in the grand solar minimum, there's always more ash and volcanic activity as a direct correlation of a grand solar minimum. And then it's the aerosol effects surprise. I don't think it's surprising at all. When you increase this many clouds, there's definitely going to be effects that you're not expecting. But you're trying to do it just based on CO2, not even taking into consideration these other outside forces. Always has to be terrestrial, doesn't it? Always has to be caused by man. Cosmic rays are up. And then the CIMP6, which I heard that the modelers at CESM were trying to cross compare data, cross verify it, and they still came up with the same result of these galactic cosmic rays, absolutely pushing the models up. They went up on that, they need to double it again. And I think we're gonna get close to something similar to what would happen with the weather pattern. The cloud project today from CERN, influence of galactic cosmic rays on aerosols and clouds and the implications for the climate. Now you're telling me that something of this grandiose magnitude is just being added into a model? Okay. Anyway, their research is talking about cosmic rays and cloud formation. And even at the cloud project, they still admit atmospheric aerosols and the effects on the climate are poorly understood. Yet I thought the science was settled. It's not settled, it's a continually evolving thing. These questions always should have been asked when they were brought up years ago when Svensmark couldn't get funding, couldn't get space either. They had to fund it themselves and find their own space because nobody in the academic institutions would let them run there. That's why I always talk about Heinrich Svensmark first. This goes back to at least 2003, and they're now just putting it in models to see what it might be when there's a grand solar minimum coming. So the mathematical function calculating aerosol effects on cloud formations. They're boosting it from sulfur dioxide emitted out of coal plants. Okay, this is the Asian area map, part of Africa as well. 
Europe. But during the grand solar minimum, there's more particulates in the atmosphere because of more volcanic eruptions. And the solar forcing models just forecast out a deep grand solar minimum. That's also the total solar irradiance, which all show decreases. And then suddenly they get the aerosol effect where things went terribly wrong. I want to see what those results are. I want to see it. If it went wrong, I want to see what happened when you boosted the aerosols. And you know what I'm talking about, how much forcing you did with the dust, the sulfur dioxide, and the increased galactic cosmic rays at 19% up. On top of the 13 we've already had. This happens every grand solar minimum. And how fast we're going to descend into this one is about six years. And I'm sure that might have been what startled the modelers. We got something on a cloud fraction like this on the global map to turning into something like this. So all the questions I asked before, did that turn into this? Is that what they're not wanting to show everybody and just try to throw and scrap that model away and then come up with something different? Because it was so wrong in what happened that it couldn't be plausible. Is this what's going to go from our water vapor concentration distributed across our equatorial bands into something twisted like this where that equatorial moisture gets pushed into different parts of the planet and then we just can't grow crops normally and they actually see it in advance where it's going to get wetter, super dark blue, and where it's going to get much, much, much drier. And these new wind and moisture patterns, how do they change directional flow as well? So you too should also be asking to take a look at this community Earth system model. What happened when they forced all the clouds and the particulates? Should be open record. It's taxpayer funded. So whatever went wrong in their models, it was something that they were totally unexpecting. Well, unless you were looking at the effects of the grand solar minimum, then you probably would have said, oh yeah, that's the grand solar minimum effect. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video.